Algonquin Park is the oldest provincial park in Canada, having been established in 1893. It is well over 7,000 square kilometers in size and is a wonderful place to recharge your soul in its wilderness of forests, hills, lakes, and trails. Today, Heather and I are bicycling this 16 kilometer long bike trail from Rock Lake to Cash Lake. It's mid-September and we're camping for a week at the Rock Lake Campground. I love this time of year with cooler nights and the lack of insects trying to turn me into a meal. Today's weather is perfect for a nice long ride, so let's get started. The trailhead is beside the registration office at the Rock Lake Campground. The trail is named Old Railway Bike Trail, so you've already figured out what was here years ago, a railway line. This railway first went into use in 1897. It was created by a man whose name is found all over Algonquin Park, J.R. Booth. Mr. Booth made his fortune in the lumber industry. There was a time in the early 20th century when this railway was the busiest in all of Canada, carrying grain and lumber and passengers. Today's trail covers only 16 kilometers of that railway's long route. If you get the time to hike some of the park's other trails, such as Booth's Rock, or even the Track and Tower Trail, you'll see other remnants of the railway, which had made its final run back in 1942. Since the trail used to be a rail line, it is flat and wide. There are a few bumpy areas along the way, but not very many, so you'll find riders of all ages and skill levels out here. We saw people on electric bikes, and even parents with their children in bike trailers along the way. The first few kilometers are actually shared roadway. I've never seen a car driving along here, but it does happen. There are some private cottages in this area that can be accessed by car. The road is gated off from public use, so only those few cottagers are able to drive here. You'll see a couple of their private driveways as you leave the Rock Lake Trailhead. You'll also come across this fork in the road as you get started. The signs clearly indicate that the trail goes off to the right. I took a quick peek along the left fork here and came to a clear sign within a few hundred meters indicating that this is not an accessible area. Within the first kilometer, we see a bridge over the small river from Rock Lake to Whitefish Lake. We often see people fishing from this bridge and paddlers passing beneath. It is a nice spot to stop if you want some private beach time. This small beach doesn't attract many people. You have a good chance of getting it all to yourself. Right away, we come to the former site of the Whitefish Lake Sawmill. Looking around today, it's hard to imagine that a factory and camp was here from 1957 to 1979. A few pieces of machinery have been left here as reminders of what it once was. It's hard to believe so much has changed in the last 50 years. Hello. Looking to the right, a few minutes after passing the lumber mill, you're going to see a cross whitefish lake. Those rock faces at the top are part of the Centennial Ridges Trail, which is one of Algonquin Park's most challenging day hikes. We just hiked that one yesterday, so it's fun to be here now looking back onto those ridges. Now for the big surprise of the day. We rounded a corner to find this bull moose walking slowly toward us. It's the closest to a moose that I've ever been. Knowing that they sometimes have a temper, we were nervous and moved off the trail to allow him room to pass by. We got some great pictures and then quietly moved to the side of the trail to let him pass. Our friend Ian loves a good moose sighting. This one's for you, Ian. It's fascinating to see how much work went into building the original railway. 
Lots of dynamite was needed to go through the hills, and lots of fill had to be brought in to build up the low areas. More great views across Whitefish Lake, looking again at the Centennial Ridges Trail. As we get closer to the northern tip of Whitefish Lake, we see the second bridge of the day. Here is more reminder of the railway that once was, the old wooden bridge beside the modern one that we use today. And finally, as we get ready to say goodbye to Whitefish Lake, we come to our third bridge at the lake's northernmost point. One more kilometer along the way, and now it's time for our first rest. We like to stop here at the Pog Lake campground, refill our water bottles, use the toilets, and watch the river. There's a dam built on this river, and paddlers have to portage around it. Leaving the Pog Kearney area, there's more blasted rock along the bicycle trail. Very quickly, we come to the next lake. Isn't it amazing how many types of plant life you will come across? This stairway allows easy access to the Lake of Two Rivers. From here, we get our first view of the Two Rivers Beach and campground, and this is our first view of the Highway 60 across the lake. We're coming up to the site of the second sawmill now. This was the McRae Lumber Company's Lake of Two Rivers location. Both of the sawmills were owned by this same company. This location was abandoned in 1945. If you're feeling energetic at this point, Take the side trip toward the Lake of Two Rivers store and campground. Going all the way to the store is about 1.5 kilometers to travel each way. This is a popular spot to have a drink or some ice cream. It's along this side trail that we see a large open area which is full of blueberry plants. When they're producing fruit, you can expect to see bears here. They love the blueberries just as much as we do. Back onto the ride, leaving the Two Rivers area. Our bike trail intersects with the Highland Backpacking Trail. About two kilometers west of Lake of Two Rivers, we find the next information board discussing the construction of the railway. These workers certainly were a hardy bunch. And now the Madawaska River comes into view, first beneath this bridge, and then flowing beside us for almost four more kilometers. Just before kilometer number 14, we come to the Head Creek Marsh. Notice how high our trail is compared to the surrounding area. There was a lot of fill needed to build this up. Here is at the uh, other end of the trail. So you can see that we're by the Track and Tower Trail hiking trail and the old railway biking trail. That's the biking trail. Track and Tower Trail comes over that way. And if we go this way, you'll see Track and Tower Trail, and that's the overview of the Track and Tower. But right by this same area, there's Mike, there's a bathroom. So if you make it to the end and you have to go pee. And passing by the toilets, we're at the end of the 16 kilometer bike trail. Time to celebrate at this picnic table with our snacks. Oh, look, we have a new friend. We stop for a snack break, and this little guy comes along and decides to uh, mooch off of us. He's very assertive and has tried to steal the food right out of our hands as we go. He does not have any fear. You can figure he's eaten a lot from people who have been by here. This is the end of the bike trail. Continuing down the way on foot, you'll find the remains of the rail bridge and a fire tower. We hiked that track and tower trail last season. About eight kilometers long, it's a moderately difficult loop and really worthwhile. Overall, we biked about 38 kilometers today at a leisurely pace with a few breaks in between. It took us about six hours for the round trip. It was a wonderful day and we highly recommend this bike trail. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you on the road or on the bike trail. Check out some of our other videos and subscribe to our channel. New content will be posted weekly.